This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Hello Australia, welcome to this very big episode of The Couch, episode 489, a very special show. Check out who's on the show today. On the show today, we've got Cameron Lynch coming in to talk showbiz. Later on on the show, we've also got uh, Clay and Paula talking music, can't wait. And Steve's back, uh, Steve Collins, of course, talking uh, uh, talking travel, not fashion. And later on, uh, we've got Danny Stefanetti singing a song for us as well to open the show. And talking fashion, we've got a big one. We've got a, the winner of the makeover today, and we're also going to be talking some feng shui, I think I said that right, with uh, our very own talking style lady, Jennifer Gilson. Big show, it all starts now. It's showtime on the couch Yeah, it's showtime on the couch You can see it from your house You can watch it from your house It's showtime on the couch With Fred And the best in town Oh, it's showtime Welcome, one and all, New Zealand and Australia to this fantastic couch program. And don't forget, for those people who don't know, we're on the web now. You can watch the whole show on a Sunday night all over the world, live. Well, live recorded, if you get what I mean. But you can see it now if you don't have Foxtel. All right, a lady that sung our theme for many, many years is back today to sing a beautiful song. It's called Smoking Gun. Please welcome Danny Stefanetti. Into the summer's graces, days always colorful. In his presence, I don't want to leave it. He's got a soft spot for the wild side. Oh, I try to tame it. I tell him now, oh baby, don't take those guns to town. He plays with danger like it's going out of fashion. Don't take those guns to town When you play with fire You're bound to get burned I'm a case of mess Just looking for an outlet I feel so defeated He's so dangerous He's homicidal crazy, I hope you're joking, baby He's got a soft spot for the wild side Oh, I try to tame it, I tell him now, oh, baby Don't take those guns to town, oh, oh He plays with danger like it's going out of fashion Don't take those guns to town When he plays with fire, he's bound to get burned Driving me to somewhere, baby, let me out, baby, let me out. Here at the corner of the highway, I'm fend for myself, fend for myself. He takes all the girls that are not in dresses now. Oh, 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 please don't shoot me down. Don't take those guns to town. He plays with danger like it's going out of fashion. Don't take those guns to town. Oh, when you play with fire, you're bound to get burned. When we learn. Danny Stefanetti, what a beautiful song. Thank you very much, Danny. And Danny's the lady who sang our theme song for about Oh, six or seven years, I reckon, probably more. Thank you, Danny. And uh, you won't be coming back at the end of the show today, but thank you for being here today. Someone that will be here today and talking style, as always, our very good friend, Jennifer Gilson. Over to you. Thank you, Fred. And I have the beautiful Michelle Castle today from Complete Feng Shui. 
Welcome to the cow. Thank you. <laughs> Very exciting to be here. <laughs> now, every day when I'm working with women, I see changes in people's lives. They may go and get the relationship they want or the job that they want. Yes. And this is what I love about Feng Shui, because one person, usually I would think a female, can have you come in and change the lives of perhaps everybody in that house. Yes, that is correct. That's generally why people call me in. They need love luck or they need money luck or they need health luck. Unfortunately, health usually comes last. Love luck's usually the first one that people want to see. So what exactly is Feng Shui? Um, it's actually the art of placement and energy. So we have energy all about us. And whether you believe in Feng Shui or not, you're actually affected by it. Um, it comes through our homes. It comes through our destiny. Um, it's, it's not clairvoyant in any way. Um, feng Shui is actually a very analytical, mathematical process. And you can actually look at the colour, the placement and the people within a home and actually correct their energy. So colour actually plays quite a big role in Feng Shui as it does in image it does, consulting as yes. well because colours, colours really affect us? Yeah, colour's really huge. You have a very high energy vibration with colour, so simply by changing the colour within your room, you can actually change the effects within that room. So by changing the colour in your kitchen or your dining room, you can have an area that may be quite argumentative, um, put in a different colour and you'll actually steal the energy and all of a sudden don't dining room, dinner times, actually not as difficult as what, what it may have used to have been. So people having arguments in the home, they could literally change the colour of the dining room yes. and arguments would at least decrease yes, they or can become actually cease. Yes, yeah, you can actually control them. Um, the energy does actually change all the time. So you have annual energy and then you have long-term energy. So um, you would always initially look at the long-term energy of the home and then you would go into the yearly energy. So each home has one particular pocket per year that is actually their argumentative pocket. And I guess one of the things that people come to you a lot about is relationships. Am I going to get married? Yes. Is this relationship working? Should I go? Should I stay? That's it. Where's Mr. Wright? Or Miss Wright? Yeah, yeah, the million dollar question. And relationship luck is extremely important. That is the first thing I would actually look at in any home. I would make sure that the bedroom placement's correct. And I would look at their Chinese astrology as well to make sure that their relationship luck was actually strong. And that can actually be tweaked quite easily, particularly if you're wanting to enhance the relationship, hold a relationship together. You can actually even use feng shui to get rid of a bad relationship if you want to. <laughs> there are tricks of the trade. <laughs> so what could you do if you want to get rid of a relationship? Uh, okay, what do? well, um, the Chinese often use the um, Mandarin duck. So often they're given to couples um, for engagement and wedding presents. So um, what, that's one of my first ports of call. I would actually put Mandarin ducks in the southwest corner of the couple's bedroom. Now, if you wanted to break up that relationship, basically you can move your Mandarin in ducks apart so they should actually always be facing each other like they're kissing um, but if you'd like the, your relationship to go in the opposite direction you can actually just turn them around um, so they actually have their back to each other I know my daughter did it to me at one point and <laughs> I wondered all of a sudden why I was having arguments with my boyfriend and it was like okay she's moved all my ducks so I would move them back and all of a sudden everything would settle once again so, Which is fantastic. So yes. if there was something you wanted to do that was positive then? Yes, then you, what could, would you, um, do? you would actually place mandarin ducks as if they're actually kissing or at least looking at each other. Um, you can actually do the same um, symbolisation with a picture, with a couple of teddy bears if you wanted to. So it doesn't have to actually look Chinese. You could have two teddy bears hugging each other in the corner and it would actually have the same symbolisation. So as long as it's showing that connection energy yes. as opposed to the disconnection, disconnection. and the yes. discord between people. Yes. yes, and you can do the same with artwork actually in a master bedroom as well. Make sure you always have a picture of a couple. You don't want a single woman in a bedroom, um, otherwise she'll find that she's actually quite lonely um, and she's quite cellular within the relationships. So some of the benefits of actually working with you, Michelle, could be to get that relationship or to actually harmonise the relationship that you yes. have, to have health in the family, to have yes. wealth in the family yes is all get the job that you, you want. want yes yes yes, yes. so and it, and it is it's basically all just about the correct placement within your home so the energy can actually smoothly flow throughout the home and would you actually advise someone if they were coming to you prior to purchasing a house would you actually say to them look this is really not a good house for you and your family would you say that sometimes um, people get drawn to houses for a particular reason so you're often drawn to a home because that is part of your destiny actually to live in that home so often people can look at a few houses and they will actually have similar energy so I tend to say go with the home that you're drawn to the one that you walk into and say wow this is my house usually that will actually be the right one for you 
and if it needs a few tweaks and yes, things, then, and then you, call you can me come and I come in and I tweak it for you um, <laughs> to make sure that that journey is actually smooth. Yes. Fantastic. And also, as part of all this, you've also written a book, Year of the Wood Horse, which yes. is 2014 for this year. Yes. So I will show the viewers here. This is the book. Now, what inspired you to write the book? Um, well, every year I actually do a workshop on the annual influence of the year with Chinese astrology, which generally changes on the 4th of February each year. So all homes and people have long-term energy, but you're also affected by the energy right now, which is your short-term energy. Um, and that changes, so people can very easily tweak their home with a few placement, a little bit of symbolisation, a little bit of knowledge that makes that year run smoothly for them. So basically, yeah, I had all this information and I thought, well, I may as well get a book out there and then the average person can learn it as well. So it, it gets it out to a lot more people. It sounds absolutely magical and you are actually going to be a genie because you're going to give 10 of these away yes, for I the am. couch. Now, if a viewer would like to receive one of these wonderful books, what yes. do they have to do, Michelle? Um, just contact either my Facebook page or my website, um, completefengshui.com.au and mention that you've seen me on the couch and I'll post a book out to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for being on today. Right. It's a huge thank subject. We just touched it on it today. Yes, yes it is. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's back to you, Fred. Thank you very much. And for more details, of course, thecouch.com.au. I actually changed all the colours in my house. I went from more earthy colours to all red leather and white. So Ooh. something in that. Thank you very much, Michelle. Great to have <laughs> yes. you here on the show. Yeah, no, no, I did it for no reason. That's uh, great. If you'd like to contact uh, any of the thing, people that you've seen here about changing your colour of furniture, maybe, this is how you do it. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos, and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now, thecouch.com.au. I've got three of these books. I can't wait to see why I've changed all the colour in my house. But that's fantastic. Now, recently on the show, uh, Jennifer Gilson uh, brought together a fantastic collaboration of uh, great companies here in WA to give a $2,000, it's actually over $2,000 makeover. Let me, let me run through the prizes that our next guest will actually win. We've got $1,000 of style and colour thanks to Jennifer herself, Jennifer Gilson. Angel, M, uh, Angel Miss Clothing worth $200. Catherine Colgan is going to do your makeup worth $300. Can't wait for that one. B Barbo will do her hair because they can't do my hair for $285. Beauty Queens will do your nails. Mine are needing a little bit of a beauty thing too. $210. And finally, Paleo Rescue will do a fantastic nutrition advice with you worth 120 bucks. Uh, to talk more on these fantastic prizes that our next guest has won, here's Jennifer Gilson again. Thank you, Fred. I would also like to say that Image by Jennifer, I'm offering a $1,000 prize as well, which I will also discuss with our fantastic winner, Carmel Murphy. Hey. Hey. Hi, yeah, let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. Welcome to the couch and absolutely congratulations. How are you feeling right now? I'm very excited about winning this. I really need it. <laughs> Fantastic. What is it that you're feeling you need? <clears throat> I feel I need to change how I dress. I know how I want to dress sometimes. However, it never seems to translate in what the clothing that I actually put on. So I can dress quite corporately at times so you have the your black jacket and but it doesn't seem to be any of me that translates into how I'm dressing. Okay so in the corporate world and in your work life you can dress because there is a dress code mm -hmm. but in your everyday life it's a bit hit and miss because of direction perhaps not knowing who is inside who, who are we dressing? Yeah exactly that and, and I tend to just throw on the track pants or I'll throw on a leggings and a top and just go because I don't know what goes with what, I don't know what I need to be wearing, although there's an inside of me yelling out going, it's not translating to how I look. 
And you know what, Carmel, you are so not alone in this because going into people's wardrobes, I will throw 50 to 80% out because that's what they have been doing. And it's only because we're not quite sure we get a bit lost. As teenagers, we're actually influenced by our friends and one or two of them actually know what they're doing, so we all follow along. Then in our 20s, we get into our work life and then we might have relationships, children, and then all of a sudden we go, oh, you know, what do I do? Where did I go? So what I'm going to do with you, Carmel, is come to your house next week, as you already arranged, and I'm going to show you who you are. So that's the beauty of the work that I do, is finding out who you are inside so we can express it on the outside. And what that looks like and translates to for each woman is different. Yeah. So, you know, we could have 10 women on the couch today and I would work with each one of them and it would be very different. They would actually end up presenting very different to each other yeah. and to how they're actually presenting currently. Fantastic. So, what would you like to get out of this? What would you like to achieve? Mm. Uh, here's your magic wand. You get your $2,000 <laughs> magic wand. What would you like to achieve? I'm excited about you coming to my house, but I'm also scared. I think I may be naked for a few months. <laughs> 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 um, what do I want to achieve? I want to let more of me out, yes. the me that I know is inside, and yet to externally looks like this woman that's a certain age and looking a certain way, and I just want to let more. I, I know there's a lot more of my uniquely me inside, imperfect as that may be. Imperfectly perfect. That's exactly it. Uniquely and perfectly perfect. <laughs> I love that. And you don't have to worry about being naked because Angel Miss is actually providing some clothing for you. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> Thank You'll God. have at least a couple of outfits. Yeah. But thank you so much for coming on today. And I look forward to when you come back on with the whole team that did the makeover for you mm -hmm. and your good self as your new self and then following you to see the changes that you then make because of your transformation. Fantastic. Right. I'm actually going on holidays to Ireland. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Thank you that so much for coming on today. And thank it's going to be an awesome holiday. Thank you so much. So you can go to the couch if you want to see the befores after photos and some of the footage once we've actually filmed it. It's going to be very exciting for you to watch as well. And as you come along and share the journey with us, with Carmel and with the couch. Well done. And thank you to all those who did enter. And it's back to you, Fred. Thank you, uh, Jennifer. And uh, Carmel, a bit of advice. Do what I did. Don't open your door when Jennifer comes. <laughs> you will be naked for years. Mind you, it's not a bad look on weekends when you go to the clubs. Trust me. And your company may actually start sponsoring you naked. <laughs> we'll look forward to the makeover. Thank you to Jennifer Gilson for bringing it all together and all those sponsors that we said before. More of The Couch after this. And Carmel will be back very soon with a new look. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Welcome back uh, to The Couch here on Aurora and Face TV around Australia and New Zealand. Thanks for your company. We've got something that I think is, is one of our great new segments, a, a lot of fun and uh, very informative. Steve uh, is back, Steve Collins from uh, Radio Roaming. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Fred. Hey, it's did a you delight hear that? to be here. They put you a little sting there, did you hear? Was that water I could hear? Yeah. Aeroplay, an airplane, thank you. It? I knew it was something. I thought we either sunk or something. It sounded like it crashed. It, it really did. wasn't it did. MH370, was it? <laughs> no, I hope not. But then they'd be able to find it if yeah. it was. Thank you for coming back. Pleasure. We've got some more interesting topics today. We I'll see the list here. Go yeah. for it. Well, first of all, I thought the uh, World Cup. Olé, olé, olé. So we'll talk about Brazil. Beautiful. Now, Brazil, of course, big country, one of the biggest countries in the world. I think it's the fifth largest country in the world. Um, but it's a superlative country. Of course, everyone knows Rio de Janeiro, mm -hmm. and Rio de Janeiro is probably one of the most exciting cities in the world. It's famous for its Ipanema Beach, its Copacabana Beach, Paella Christ Rose. the Redeemer, who you know oh, stands yes. on the Copacabana. Yes. Have you been right above? I haven't been to Brazil, Not no, yet. and I haven't been to Rio. Yeah, uh, but I have spoken to Ronnie Biggs when he lived in uh, oh, in, wow. in Rio de Janeiro, and he loved it. 
<laughs> it's a place that I've always seen on TV. I mean, I've seen photos yep. of it there on screen. Yep. You maybe want to talk through that's, them. Uh, yes, certainly. That's Iguazu Falls, which is the world's largest waterfall. Beautiful. There's 275 individual falls there. That's the the, uh, the Pantanal, which I'll tell you about in a very, the world's largest waterway. They're pink dolphins. They are in the pink Amazon. Dolphins. They're in uh, pink dolphins. They're freshwater dolphins. And, of course, there's Rio. There's Christ the Redeemer above it all. But it's a great, great place. You've got so much. You've got Rio, which is one of the world's most exciting cities. You've got Amazonia, which is the Amazon River with the world's mm. largest rainforest there. Uh, the big city in Amazonia on the Amazon is Manaus. Mm. That's about 1,500 kilometres upstream oh, wow. from the mouth of the river. Now, that's like us getting on a boat and going up to Dampy or somewhere. It's a long way. And that's only about halfway along the length of the Amazon. So How, much do, we to get see there. There? How do we get to Brazil? Oh, but as well, well I, I would tend to fly from here. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wasn't could, planning on losing weight. But, but it will take you a while. Uphill, yeah. Although, I, I, although there are some people trying to row there, but uh, I, I, I'd fly. Look, it's pretty easy. The best way to get to mm -hmm. it from Perth yep. is probably to fly via Santiago in Chile, and then it's a little short hop, hop across. To where, from, from there. And you get, there's lots of budget airlines in, uh, in South America mm. as well, particularly a is couple in... Of course it's safe. As I mean, well, it's no more hurt. dangerous yeah, than anywhere else. Because a lot of people say that, oh, it's a bit dodgy, because I wanted to go to India a while ago, and people said, don't go there. Well, no, but, India's, India's quite safe. Uh, I wouldn't eat from a, uh, a food cart? stall, a street cart in Unless you in, bring in, your in yoghurt with but, you. But, I mean, that's no, that, there's, that's no more. I mean, people... I remember when, when London, you know, with the IRA were attacking London, and I was over there, you couldn't check your bag into it anywhere. That was dangerous. But uh, places like India or Brazil, I don't think they're all that dangerous. So with Rio, yep. what would be the five top reasons for going there? It doesn't have to oh, be Oh, it's five. just an exciting city, of course. If you go during Mardi Gras, which uh, happens uh, just before Lent, that's yep. always great. But I, I would, for me, I yep. would be going, I'd be going for the Pantanal, which is in the Mato Grosso, which is in the western part of the country. It's the world's largest wetlands. Mm. That is where you will see much, 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 most of the wildlife there. Beautiful because it's not covered in, in huge trees. And the water there is very clear. It's got the world's largest collection of freshwater marine animals. And you go drifting and you just put on a goggles and, uh, and a snorkel and you just drift with the current, very easy current. It's marked. Are the pink dolphins protected over there? Yeah, the pink dolphins are protected. Yeah, they are now. They never used to be. <laughs> oh, they good. Are. So it's not there like may be. It may be that some that? native tribes that uh, could, could hunt them in their traditional mm. manner. But there's some great Iguazu Falls, which I said is, is mag magnificent. The place, one of the best beaches to go to is a place called Florinopolis. Now, Florinopolis mm. is south of Rio. That's where the Brazilians go wow. because the beaches there are really, really good and it's a party city. So there's lots of clubs and pubs sort of like and bars there. and restaurants. Yeah, that's right. It is. It is like that. And great beaches. Beautiful. Uh, and I, I reckon the pick of it, though, is Fernando de Noronha, which is an island group. It's a 21 uh, archipelago of 21 islands, which is about 200 k's off the northeast coast of Brazil. Mm. Um, only one of those islands is, is inhabited. It has got a beach called Sancho, which is considered the best beach in Brazil. And many places, many of these organisations that do surveys reckon it is the best beach in the world. It is absolutely sensational. The water there is so clear that on a full moon, you can see the reefs under the water. It's just amazing. Beautiful. Let's talk about travel insurance. Yep, you know travel insurance. There's an adage that says that if you can't afford travel insurance, you can't afford to travel. And I agree with that. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, if I go overseas and I get into trouble, well, my government will bail me out. They, have, they, they will not. There is no... There is no reason why your government should pay you money exactly. because you, you've got into trouble. Take your travel insurance. Um, you can shop around for it because there are a, a I pretty buy good it online. Bargains. I don't know about you, Steve. I go for TID yeah. or people like that. Well, I buy it online, but I'm a member of... I, I'm, I've got, got health in, private health insurance. Okay. And the, I've found that they're the best because I'm a member. I get a member it's discount. And it's you. fantastic. But the other thing is there's things like... Um, your smartphones and your camera equipment, etc. If that's really valuable, then it's then just just pay shots. a little bit extra for that. Bear in mind also, though, that if you have a, a, a medical condition, a permanent one, 
then you can uh, then you can take a bit of extra insurance against that because that generally won't be covered. But it's, I think it's really, really, really it's important. It's really important. To take and see, a lot of people will, will take so many expensive things with them, but they won't spend a couple of hundred dollars on well, travelling. Well, they're idiots. And I, and I say to them, <laughs> and I've met them. We've all met them in yeah. the pool where they've fallen yeah. over and they yeah. oh, my God, I haven't got any travel oh, insurance. Oh, well, it's going to cost me a fortune. The government should get me out of the pool. Oh, no. Forget about it. Well, imagine if everybody did that. Yeah, well, exactly. So, a, no, it's worthwhile. Take okay. Insurance. And we want to talk about the Gibb River Road. Gibb River Road is up Tell in the Kimberleys. It's, it's time now, a bit, usually between May and September because in the wet season at floods, you can't do it. It goes from Derby up uh, to uh, the Wyndham Road. It's just the magic. That's Bell Gorge. That is one of the best gorges. You've got to walk into these gorges. That is the Coburn Plains. If you saw the, the movie Australia, yep. uh, that is where it was, it was shot. Made. Emma Gorge is part of El Questro Station. Oh, that is fantastic. On one Beautiful side, that, the right side, it's cold water. The right side, there's an overhang. You oh, go okay, there, and it's like having a warm shower. My favourite, Galvin's Gorge. That is... The easiest gorge to get to, uh, and it's just magnificent. Gibb River Road, that just tells you. See, a lot of those gorges are open. Uh, Zebedee Springs mm. at El Questro Station. That is just gorgeous. That is, that is just you with your warm. camera? That was me with my camera. They wouldn't let me in, though. I'd take it up. And that's the Pentecost River, which is one of the five How biggest beautiful. rivers in there. It's just just great. And that is Wingena Gorge. Wingena Gorge is an old Devonian reef. Tunnel Creek it's a 175 metre walk underground following this creek. Incredible. A huge, huge cave that you walk through. And it is the most glorious place. And of course, you're up there practically by yourself. And uh, finally, I wanted to ask you, how do, what's this about dressing up when you're travelling? Well, you've got to use a bit of common sense when you travel. I mean, if you're going overseas and yeah. you're going to visit a church or a temple, dress appropriately for that because you have to respect these yeah, places. These are sacred places and respect it. But the other thing is the people who wear thongs when they fly, how stupid I've is seen that? Them, well, I know not only have oh. you got to smell their dirty feet on, a, on an enclosed <laughs> aircraft, but, you know, if something happens, if there's yes. a big jolt or something, if, some, if, if, if somebody spills gone. hot water or, or your coffee or your tea and scalds you, but worse still, if you have a minor air crash, mm. and bear in mind that most people survive air crashes, um, but if you've got your bare feet, the first thing that's going to happen if you have come to sudden hold or whatever is the seats are going to go clunk, 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 clunk because they're on tracks. And there goes your they feet. will shred your, your feet to pieces mm. if you don't have shoes. If you've got shoes, they're all right. But if you have to get out of the cabin and you've got shredded feet, Forget it, you're mate. You're you gone. Walk. Radio Roaming, tell me what all, that's all about because you've got a radio. Radio Roaming, it's a, it's a talking travel 24 7. That's all we do. We just, you just go to our website, radioroaming.com. We're on iTunes Radio, we're on TuneIn, we're a whole pile. And if you want to know about travel, I talk to some of the best people in travel. I've heard some of you. And it's very Yeah, and, I, very and I do little documentaries, I do a whole pile of different stuff. And if you want to know about travel, and you want to have a listen to a really good radio station, just go in there. Radio Roaming, you saw the website yeah. on screen right now. Thank you very much to Steve Collins. Pleasure. What are you talking about next time? Do you know yet? No, I haven't decided yet. Maybe we should have some photos of you inappropriate dress. You can tell me. Or you, you, what, what would you like me to talk about? I reckon we should do Europe. I'd love to talk about Croatia. Yes, we can do Croatia. Because I want to know a bit yeah. more about it if we can. Okay. And maybe about cruises as well. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Steve. We've, no uh, they're winding me up 14 times. I'm just pretending I can't see. We've got another fantastic guy back from Hong Kong. I think he's just been back. Cameron Lynch, welcome back. Is it Hong yes. Kong? Uh, yes, Hong Kong. And also I went... Did uh, you wear appropriate clothing? Yes, I did, actually. Very appropriate. Uh, the Chung Sam and uh, got carried around on a horse. I didn't. The who? Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's no one named oh, Sam. Don't funny. worry. I know, right? Um, yes, but... Why uh, do you go to Hong Kong, can I ask? What's uh, so beautiful about Hong Kong? Uh, we do a lot of business there and my, um, my partner's family's from there oh, as well. Oh, so, you, so don't, yeah. you don't actually go for the touristy thing. Oh, we do as well. Yeah, it's really great. It's great. Uh, yeah, it's really cheap. And it blows my mind that people, especially in WA, still go to Bali when you can just save up a little bit more and go somewhere nicer like Hong Kong. Sorry, Fred. But I am going to Bali at the end of this year just to, just to stay on site. Um, but I agree with Steve with the uh, with the thongs on the flight thing. I think if they ha if they know, if they don't wear shoes, they deserve everything they get, number yes. one. And number two, men's toes are disgusting and should be outlawed. <laughs> but I think also with the insurance thing... I'll sit that, you next to Steve well, next time, if, if, if It's almost good... That, is that the only seven, part of men's things that should be outlawed? Or well, not? there are, but yeah. we don't have a show long enough okay. to, to cover all that. But um, Channel 7 are loving that people don't get insurance because otherwise they won't have that show <laughs> what really happens in Bali yeah. where people are injecting drugs into their eyes. And I'm still on, amazed on that Channel 7 refuses to, to acknowledge that they did Hey Dad for all those years <laughs> That's exactly and that point. he was doing everybody else. <laughs> yes, but... Um, ooh.
<laughs> if you get what I'm... Um, but yes, but hey, speaking of Channel hey, 7, oh, segue. Go nice. for it. Um, there, he's in a legal battle, he... Channel Seven's in a legal battle with uh, Channel Nine over a one Miss Mel B, Melanie Brown. Yeah, she's um, on. Um, there she is. There um, with uh, that's a, yes, a sad lady sandwich. Voice. That's her in the middle, by the way. Just don't get confused by those uh, sad How women on either side. How did she get side. back on Channel Nine? Well, here's the thing. Um, channel Seven tried to kibosh her uh, contract with Channel Nine because yeah. of her X Factor um, sort of ties or whatever. Uh, and now basically they're trying to fight her because they didn't want her to do the revamp of Australia's Got Talent. But for some reason she's not allowed to do that. But she's allowed to do. The, the very, very deplorable concept of the voice for kids. I saw that. Which is just... Uh, do, do you, I saw it last week, you, and as soon as I heard her, I thought it was one of the American shows. Don't, Why would so they I have a TV that? show for baby goats? Well, that's... <laughs> I don't know. Mind you, they probably sing better than the ones it's, I saw. It's a good thing you're on radio. Anyway, um, <laughs> you don't watch that telly. I've got the face for radio. Well, but that, this is the thing. Like, It's great that we're still enjoying a level of exploitation of children in the first world country, especially with the consumerism of, of TV. But I just can't think of a worse idea. Why would I don't you know put her she, there, but Exactly. Well, this is what a lot of people are saying, because she's like, you know, um, she's, she tells it like it is, and she's going to be really harsh on these little kids and stuff like that. So, But she's like, well, leave me out of the you know legal battles or whatever. I don't want to do anything about that. I just want to tell little kids how crap they are, and that's pretty much what she does. So, hey, it's been 20 years since she told us what she wants, what she really, really wants, so we should maybe sit up and listen. Speaking of what people want, Paul McCartney, he mac oh, himself. There's another um, one. Here he is in, in Ibiza. Say it with yeah. me, Fred. Oh, Say it with me, Fred. Is it Ibiza? Ibiza. 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 Steve, can you it, say Ibiza? Ibiza. Thank you. Because if you don't list, people think he's from Canada yeah, or something. Um, but basically, Ibiza, or coast of Spain, whatever. Okay. Um, he's 72 and jumping off uh, a yacht. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah. Yes, on the left I there. I bet he's so, got travel insurance. Yes, yeah, exactly. And uh, a bit of a bum shot there. He would have owned the, the, own own the well. travel insurance company, probably. Exactly. I would say um, so. Yeah, so 72 years old and, and uh, jumping off a yacht like that's pretty good. But people said this is a bit funny when he's cancelling like tour dates because he's ill and things like that. Mm. That boat, by the way, if we can just show it one last time, is made entirely of Viagra. Uh, it's just sort of painted over. <laughs> so that's why he's 72 years old. Well, looking at his, and the sea as picture. well, the ocean right look next at to it. Look, yeah. at it look, at he, look at his swimmers. They're coming down below yeah. his... Um, he looks like a flesh-coloured gumby. But isn't Viagra yeah, supposed yeah, to work bit, on the other bit, side of the body, the back? Yes, so, uh, but good good for Paul back mm. and uh, and keeping it up there one, one way or another. Another uh, uh, septicanarian, I'm pretty sure I got that wrong, that's 90s and over, but anyway, uh, Ray... Mayor? Ray Ma. <laughs> Bloody hell. Stain, stain the crows. I completely that, messed him up. Uh, a, an Australian icon, uh, Mad Dog Morgan, Breaker Morant, uh, the chant of Jimmy Blacksmith, <laughs> Batty on Prisoner, and of course Home and Away, which is celebrating its 6,000th episode coming up. Uh, he's turned 70. Um, and he's telling he's basically. Retiring. Well, no, he's told oh. the, he's told Abbott he can he go. He was 15 when he started doing Home exactly. and Away. So, but he's told Abbott he really? can go and stuff it uh, with his 70 uh, year old retirement plan, yeah. and he wants to keep going and going. Mm. Um, and he's come out with some good advice for up and comers, so like Liam Hensworth, uh, like Chris Hensworth, I should say, and Ryan Quanson, who've been on uh, Home and Away and then sought, sought success in Hollywood and things like that. Um, great Australian icon. I think it's great that he wants the to keep is, going. The thing is, Raymar, I only ever see him when they when they bring back Elsa as a ghost. Yes, I've very rarely <laughs> seen him actually do anything. So he's probably hoping that he has, becomes very good friends with Alice and they bring her back for a special Or if period. he needs to punch a principal in front of a bunch well, of kids. It. Yeah, I don't know. I watch Neighbours like yeah. you do. Yes. And I still can't understand why people watch Home and Away. Uh, well, I think it's for him. Once he's oh, gone, well. I think the show will dissolve. Um, and uh, really quick, um, <laughs> yep. so speaking of people I wish it would dissolve, maybe you poured some vinegar on her, she would because her face is made of plastic. Sophie Monk apparently was passed over by um, Scott. That's her pretending to order a pizza. No. Or, how may, or how may I connect your call? Um, she <laughs> apparently was passed over from that. Scarlett Yo oh, Sorry, Scarlett Johansson got the role in Chris... Uh, Vicky Cristina Barcelona, yeah. apparently apparently Woody Allen himself called her and said, I want you to star in my movie, please call me now. And then she didn't call him for like two days. Really? And he got passed over in this role. This was revealed on her horrible uh, radio show recently. So, um, And she said, you know, my life's like a sitcom and something will come back. And the fact that, you know, there's four cameras constantly on her and she's, she's badly written in poorly. And I am so. amazed you have not touched on Family Feud with Grant Denyer coming oh, back on the 12th I, of July. I'm just, I'm just praying that's just a... a, a Steve a, a, would remember. Steve, do you remember oh, Tony Barber? Oh, I do remember. I'm Tony excited yes, to I'm see excited. someone. In fact, I, I reckon what you should I thought do, Tony you should was century. survey the they crew were, but the... to find out what the top answer will be. And you know what? The similarities between Grant Denny and Tony Barber, the height's the same. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> really quick, because we're getting the wrap-up yep, as well. Um, uh, a, a salute 
to a man amongst men, a, a, an actor amongst actors, a, a beautiful humanitarian Steve. and a prince amongst oh, no. people. No, uh, Shia LaBeouf himself. Oh. Uh, here he is at downtown New York getting processed uh, for a, a series of meltdowns he's had recently. So a mu about a, a month train, ago... He's a train cross-dresser, is he? Uh, no, that's, that's <laughs> him in the blue there. Oh, so, sorry. Uh, no, not Beetlejuice next to him. Um, uh, but basically, he uh, about a month ago, he went uh, to an L.A. restaurant and took a, a, a whiz in the back lot and got thrown out. But recently, he was uh, seen drinking in around sort of L.A. and New York. Uh, sorry, L.A., I should say. Uh, he got into a fight with a homeless person over mm. a hat. He was, <laughs> he was berating drunken women in the street. And, uh, and then he went to uh, the very illustrious Studio 54 and got kicked out of production of Cabaret for yelling, Do, don't you know who the F I am? Shia LaBeouf. We salute you. Keep it going, because <laughs> God damn, it's Thank you, Cameron. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Steve as well. Steve, squish over to the left. Can you can squish over just a little bit more this way? That's it. Thank you very much, because Frank needs to sit there. Thank you to you guys. Fantastic segments. And now here's another fantastic segment. Nisha, squeeze in. And Frank, Prokop, move in. Squeeze in. There they are. Over to you, Nisha. You're ready. Thanks, Fred. Frank does join us, the Executive Director from the Health Consumer Council. Welcome to the couch. Thank you so much for having me. Absolute pleasure. Now we have a very interesting topic to talk to our audience about today. And it's one that affects anyone who's ever been in a hospital, mm -hmm. and that's something called informed consent. Mm, yes, certainly we've all had those forms in front of us. So what they do is every time that you go in, the hospital system needs to make sure that you know what's about to happen, and they get you to sign a form that says you agree to and acknowledge both what will happen and any of the potential consequences. One of the challenges, however, is that a lot of the consumers feel like they're being pushed into signing something. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of questions. They're not necessarily going to be asking them. And what we've done through the Health Consumers Council is work with the system to make sure that you know exactly what's going to happen and you're discussing the cause and effect, including the emotional aspects because that's one of the things that often gets forgotten about in, in a visit to the hospital. Sure, because hospitals are very busy, aren't they? So um, when they're passing out forms, might not look at the human relations aspect. What do you suggest for people who have a form in front of them? There are a couple of things. One is to take the time to read it carefully. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the side effects mm -hmm. or any of the consequences are clearly art articulated and mm -hmm. that there's a risk uh, associated with them. If there's something on that that makes you really frightened or really, really worried, mm -hmm. ask questions. There's nothing wrong with asking mm -hmm. questions of your healthcare professional. That's their job to make sure that you know. It's your body that they're going to be working on and you need mm -hmm. to be comfortable that any of the consequences are well understood. We also strongly recommend that you take someone with you. Mm -hmm. That if you're the person who's being talked to and it's a significant procedure, you may not exactly be understanding everything that's said at the time and having someone who can help to explain it to you later can be an enormous advantage. But don't sign the form until you're certain that you know what's going to happen and that you're comfortable with what the procedure is going to be. And what are some other challenges as well? Because I'm, I'm hearing you in terms of um, a very raw example would be if you had just been diagnosed or with, with something quite serious, your mind would not be in the right spot. We get a lot of people who come mm. to the Health Consumers Council who have um, been told things such as they've got uh, vascular surgery associated with the complication from diabetes. Mm. And they've been told that uh, one of the consequences might be that they could even lose a leg or a foot. And then they wake up and that's come to pass. And they're really upset and, and, and frightened because they didn't realize that it was actually a likely consequence. Mm. We know that the doctor said that, that that's one of the things that can happen, but it might be at the 10% to 5% level. And most people have dismissed that as a, as a likely mm -hmm. possibility. So we ask people, if, if you play football with your mates mm -hmm. and losing a, a, a foot, which is one of the consequences, mm -hmm. is the thing that really worries you, to make sure the doctors are aware that that's the last resort, mm -hmm. that they'll work with you and manage it. And, and they'll also work with your carer or your partner or your family mm -hmm. to make sure that if it does come to pass, mm -hmm. when you wake up, we're working on ways that we can get you used to the idea that the thing that you're most afra afraid of has actually um, come to pass. Mm. And you mentioned the support network, the family. How important is that and, and what education do you provide them with? The research is extraordinarily strong to say that mm. a patient that has a, a strong support network will do very much better mm. because they provide that comfort. They provide that e emotional support mm. that's so important. And we talk to the families 
Um, there's Carers WA, uh, that's also an organisation that provides a strong support for, for carers. Mm -hmm. And make sure that the patient is going in there in the best possible frame of mind. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes the doctors will say to you that, that they're the people who will do all the, the mechanical work. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily true. There's lots that you can do as the patient. If you're interested in it, things like meditation are often useful for, for people. You can make sure that your diet is right. You can make sure that you do as much exercise as you can so that you can come in a little bit stronger because some of the surgical procedures can be quite uh, daunting and have a big impact. You can imagine. So everyone has a role to play in the process. They do, and, yeah. and what we need to make sure is that the patients and the carers have an understanding that they're allowed to be proactive. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're worried or nervous, mm -hmm. make sure that you're um, comforted, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the health system is there to serve you, to service you, to make sure that you mm -hmm. get better, but also we'd like to think that it's there to help you get well. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit more uh, ambitious, mm -hmm. but we're working very much towards so Frank, if people want to find out more, how do they do that? They can look at our website, which is www.hconc.org.au and get as much information as they need. Wonderful. Thank you for coming on the show and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Now, if you missed any of that, of course, all the information is available on thecouch.com.au. But for now, it's back to you, Fred. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Anisha. Thank you to Frank as well. We'll see you next month. Frank, with another great topic. Thank you to Cameron sitting next to me. We'll take a break on the couch. Be back with another great segment. Dennis Law is coming into Breakthrough Success. Join us after the break. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito. Give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water and Reading Cinemas. Experience the difference. Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television. Dennis Law is back right now to break through success with our very own Nisha. It's over to you. Thanks, Fred. Dennis does join us on the couch again. Master Practitioner, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nish. So nice to be here. Now, last time you were here, we talked about some pretty interesting stuff that you do. But I for did. those audience members that missed out, can you quickly talk us through what you do? Yeah, the, really what we're trying to do for people is break through their barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, those barriers we help to break through with timeline therapy mm -hmm. and hypnotherapy. So it's anything that's holding someone back. And that could be inappropriate anger. People who get mm -hmm. angry at something happened, whether it was six months ago or six years ago, if you still feel angry about that, that isn't appropriate. It is holding you back from being the best you can. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. That's the breakthrough is letting go of what happened yesterday and focusing on what you're going to do tomorrow. Now, often people see different types of allied health professionals when they've got an yep. issue, whether it be inappropriate anger or anxiety. What do your clients present with um, other than anger? I know there's probably other areas that you work in. Actually, the, the most recent person I had present with confusion mm -hmm. because, the, as you quite rightly mentioned, the allied health professionals, we are complementary in, in mm -hmm. as much as we complement what the medical practitioners do and the psychologists mm. and psychiatrists, we complement that. At the end of the day, this person presented was with, with quite confused person mm. because they thought the situation had happened to them 18 years previously. But when we took them on the timeline journey, we found that the incident actually happened when that person was eight. Mm. Now, okay. The unconscious mind is very, very clever and it will tell the medical practitioner practitioners what it wants to tell them. Mm -hmm. We dig a little deeper, a little further, and find out the learnings from events that have happened in the past. So perhaps if um, you have seen somebody before and you feel like you're not breaking through, using the analogy I guess a bit yeah. before, it, it's, it's important to understand that what you do has that second layer, if you like, of analysis. That's a nice way to put it. Mm -hmm. And it's very friendly, it's very cool, very calm. Mm -hmm. There's no great big, oh, this is what happened. No, no, mm -hmm. all we really want is the learning from that event and then disassociate people from the emotion associated with it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a really interesting journey. 
But once you've broken through the barriers that your mind is holding you back, mm -hmm. then you can go on into the future with confidence and feel much happier. Mm, that sounds ideal. Now, mm. look, we do have an exercise that you're going we to do. talk us through, which we're really looking forward to. So um, I'll let you do the exercise, and then what do we'll it. do is we'll come back afterwards and you can find out more about um, where to catch up with Dennis. But over to you now, Dennis. I'll let you prepare, and our Thank audience you so much. will wait. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. Now, can you talk? I know you need a couple of minutes. It's quite an intense exercise, but as I, I'm quite good at talking, I'll talk <laughs> for a couple of minutes to warm you in. But Actually, it's not so bad. The, the hand isn't hurting at all. Okay. As you can see, it's not red. Okay. And people yep. watching may be saying, okay, how do I relate what Dennis just did to you know, my life and, and me breaking through? How would you explain it? I would explain it this way. You cannot possibly break through to the future if you're holding on to the past. If there's anything in the past that is holding you back, and that can be anger, fear, frustration, sadness, any of those emotions, mm -hmm. if they're holding you back, you cannot possibly break through. Once you reach the point where I can let go of all the emotions that's been negatively affecting me, mm -hmm. focus on what I want in the future, and then act. This demonstration just serves to focus on what you're doing. Let your mind overrule what your body says. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you can with the power of positive thinking and action. You can break through to the future and have great success. So it's mind over matter in, in some it degree. It definitely is mind over matter. And what I would say is, folks, please do not try that at home until you've been prepared to break through properly. Sure. So, you know, as a, as a safety alert as well, what Dennis just did, um, he's obviously a trained professional and so being mindful that you see someone like Dennis before you attempt that exercise. But it's the symbolism that people take away is what yeah. I'm hearing. It's yeah. a symbol. It's let us break through to your success. Fab. Look, I just watching you, it's just awe when you, when you see it um, in person. But Dennis, there will be um, an exciting offer that Fred will talk through later, won't they? Oh, there definitely will. And that's there for everyone to take advantage of. So please listen to what Fred has to tell you in a little while. Fabulous. And unfortunately, we have to go because I'm loving speaking with you. But where can we find out more information? On the website. And that would be pro-techenergy2014.com or you can try any of the mobile number 04886908. One, three. Lovely. Well, thank you for joining thank us, you. and I'm sure you'll come back yeah. on the couch again soon. I certainly will. Thank you. Thank and you. handing over to you, Fred, make sure you grab onto this good deal that Fred's going to lure you into. Otherwise, go to thecouch.com.au for more details. Thank you, Nisha. I was just breaking through my own lolly there. Yes, there is a great deal. Thank you for reminding me about that, uh, Dennis. The next 10 callers, but they have to do it now. The next 10 callers go to our website. This is how easy it's going to be. Our website is thecouch.com.au. You will have Dennis's phone number that he just said. So if you rewind the tape, if you recorded it. Otherwise, go to our website. There'll be a link there with Dennis's phone number. But the first 10 callers from anywhere in Australia or the world who phone uh, Dennis will get a 15-minute consultation for free. That's a 15-minute consultation for free. All you got to do is ring him up, so you saw it on the couch, and Dennis will look after you. Thank you very much. Uh, coming up, we've got music news coming up with Paul and Clay. That's next, right after this break. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh pure water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference.
Welcome back to the couch here on Aurora Television and uh, Face TV in New Zealand if you're watching or on the net for those people who watch us on the net. Don't forget you can become a couchie at any time. We'd love to have you join up as a couchie because uh, we will be running Spin It to Win It from about July, August. So please get in touch with us now. Become a couchie. Go to our website. But uh, someone that's already a couchie, she's always a couchie when she's sitting on the couch especially and a husband. Uh, hello. <laughs> welcome back to Clay and to Paula. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you Thanks for having, having us. Good? We're well this week, yeah. What you been doing? Gigging. Gigging? 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 Working. Have you got some shows coming up? Or separately? Oh, but... All separately, Yeah, all separately. Much, yeah, so just sort of working towards the um, New Zealand National Anthem that I'm doing in August. Oh, um, and I'm for the rugby? For the All Blacks, yeah, versus... How does that go? Can you do a little bit for me? I know your voice isn't this time of the morning. Ehoa atua o Beautiful. <laughs> I, I'm only, I'm, I can only go, ha, kari, kari. <laughs> I don't know hey, what that is. Awesome, that's pretty That works. That's, yep, good. that's good. What was that that I sang? Because I, I remember kari, 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 Yeah, Dame Kitty Takanawa would Beautiful. have made that iconic for I loved one. it. Loved yes. it. What are we talking about in music? Because I know we're going to talk about Bobby uh, Womack. Yes. Yes. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Bobby Womack passed away earlier this year, age 70. Yes. 70. still young. Yeah. It is, rather. Tragic or just... No, he... No, um, I mean, he done his dash, I'd imagine, but I mean, he, he was... What was he famous for? Because I don't know a lot. I know the name, but I can't remember. Yep. His soul and, and, and raspy R&B type voice. Um, Any famous songs? Yeah, he did. Well, he did songs like um, Down on 110th Street and like... A, he, his main own one that he was doing was he wrote a song for the Rolling Stones. Yes. Yeah. So, That's you know, and that famous. made it iconic. Yeah. The sad part about it was he died from prostate cancer and... Alzheimer's? Yeah. And oh. he was quoted as he saying... He was quoted as saying something like, um, I hate that I have this because I won't be, re be able to remember the songs I've written for people. Yeah, so and it was just a, a tragic loss to the, to the music world. Very, very sad. Ozzy Osbourne, what's this about him becoming a nice? Okay, there's <laughs> goss, right? There's goss going around. It has to be gossip. There's, there's a <laughs> Australian... At, this is just funny. This. There's an Australian super fan that started this petition to mm. get Ozzy knighted by yeah, the Queen. Paula. No, not me, not me. No. I mean, the man is an uh, amazing singer. Do you think singer. he's a legend or you're not really that rapid? Well, I think for his circle of music, yeah, he is a legend. You know, he created so I many good songs. I still remember him when he did that reality TV show, which was so, <laughs> so For that alone, it's about damn time he gets it. Yeah, okay. but I think he was quoted as saying, you know, he, he's got not a lot of, uh, he's not vested his whole being into being nice or anything. Oh, he just thought it was then. pretty cool. Um, he also thought it would be good for his what wife because she'd be a lady. Is it, is it, do you reckon it's going to happen? I mean, is it, will the Queen knight him? Could you picture the Queen well, meeting Well, you know, she, she, well, isn't Mick knighted Mick Jagger? Yeah, is he so He's kind of McDonald's. more iconic, I think. McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, but, you'd have, but you can't put him in the same sort of um Yeah, true. Rolling Jagger, Stones, no, Prince of really. Darkness. Ooh. Is that Elton John is knighted as well? Well, he should have been Dame, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> Dame. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have to speak to Tony Abbott. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ozzy Osbourne could be knighted. This could is the rumour, and it's been led by an Australian fan base. Yeah, Australian fan base. Oh, well, yeah. find fan. out who She's they are. We'll Actually, we've got her name. Her name is Helen. Helen Mediotis. And her phone number and address? 0472. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> I won't give it away. It real. No. But they, can you look? Has she got a Facebook page where she's? We'll have a look at it. We'll, we'll look we'll it up for you, know, you and yeah, we'll post it on the couch website. Wonderful. <laughs> now, what else have you got coming up? Okay. I've got here an upcoming gig. We have. So what it is is two years ago, um, Hawaiian reggae band Kolohe Kai, which is huge in New Zealand and you know Australia. I love how you pronounce these Kolohe names. Kai. <laughs> Kolohe Kai. <laughs> it's New very Zealand exotic. Um, they broke up two years ago because the lead singer went to do his Mormon mission. Now he's come back and they're doing their first ever tour to Perth. Mm -hmm. And that's with our friends um, touring company, Natural Touring. Um, so they're huge. So Style of music? Reggae. Hawaiian, yeah. Hawaiian reggae. reggae. Yeah, which is no different. Good, no crime. No, it's a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a different. Can you feel good bit, reggae. You sing all your news. <laughs> so yeah. feel good reggae. Yeah. I reckon so all reggae is good, eh? Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. It just makes you want to. Makes you do this, bounce. yeah. Big day out. Sad news about that. What's yeah, happening there? Oh, my God. oh, look, don't get me started. <laughs> I went to a couple of them. I think I came, I went when. Um, was it Pearl Jam was here? Yep. I went to that one. Exactly. So um, it's been cancelled. So 2015's Big Day Out not is now cancelled. I heard it might be happening only every two years. Is that right? They're not sure yet. They're sort of temporarily. It's only put Perth it on that hold. got cancelled, or is that all around Australia? All of Australia. 
the oh, whole of Australia. So the promoter Fantastic. for it um, also runs Lollapalooza in America. Mm -hmm. And even though they had Pearl Jam headline at last year, they lost money. So I think the company's a little bit broke. But, you know, it, it was a festival that launched Nirvana's career in 1992. So, you know, it's in its heyday. Can Big Day Out was the best day out. Can or maybe write to people? Is there a website? Probably. There would be, absolutely. Chances are there. People are the web, already. Yeah, no, Big Day Out website and Because what the, 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 it's been going since, what, 92? Yeah, exactly. For a long time. So it's done a long thing. But, you know, a lot of festivals these days try and get as many people as they yeah. can and spread well, it out over a few days. Well, they so far in advance to try and mm. see how many people yeah. are interested. But exactly. that's sad. Big Day Out's sort of iconic, isn't it? It is rather. I remember going to one of those, yeah. two of those. Yeah, and they're quite expensive now, too. I mean, yeah. Claremont Showground it used to be. Yeah, it did. I remember yeah. it used to get the free water and everything to make sure everyone was refreshed and they used to spray water all over us. It was oh, so the good hot. old days when <laughs> the we could good wear old wet t-shirts. <laughs> remember when we could wear wet yeah. t-shirts and people actually looked? <laughs> now they just throw up. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy about that, actually. <laughs> Next month when Clay doesn't come back. No. <laughs> it's all right. I won't do the wet T-shirt on the show. And you've got something very interesting just quickly about a, a little secret play that's coming. Yes, OK, so there's a show called A Saucy Little Secret. Yes. Um, they're raising funds at the moment so because they've been invited to the Melbourne Festival and the Sydney Fringe Festival as well. Um, it's got the best jazz and blues singers in all of Perth. So it's got Libby Hammer, Harry oh, Deluxe, Natalie Gillespie, um, Paula Ferrari. <laughs> Paula Ferrari. Are you um, in it as well? I am, and oh. Odette Mercy. So it's full of jazz and blues singers and me. And how much are the tickets? Um, well, we got a fundraiser at the Ellington yep. um, on the 4th of July, and it's for $25 a ticket. Beautiful. So it's to help raise funds to help us fly. Fantastic. Yeah. So if you're watching this online, buy your tickets because you still can. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's have a look at the top fives just quickly. Let's have a look at the top five singles. And they are as follows. Number five. Stay High, Habits Remix, Tough Low. Number four. Waves by Mr. Probs. Number three. Don't Stop, Five Seconds of Summer. Number two. Am I Wrong, Nico and Vince. And at number one. Que sera, Justice Crew. Que sera. Let's have a look at the top five albums around the world, around Australia. Lazaretto, Jack White. Number four. Ghost Stories, Coldplay. Number three. Is The Hunting Party, Linkin Park. Number two. Utopia, 360. And number one album around Ultra Australia. Ultra Violence, Lana Del Rey. Well done. I'm going to go out and get my wet T-shirt on. <laughs> and we'll practice uh, after the show. Thank you very much to Clay Thanks and for to Paula. Us. Look forward to having you back in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you and support them. Please check out our details on our website for more details. That is it for the show today. Thank you very much for watching all around Australia and the world of through New Zealand and anywhere else you might be watching the show. Very uh, sad week for me. Last week, the 26th of June, which you're now seeing the show only a few days later if you're watching it on online or around Australia or New Zealand. Uh, 26 June, my mother passed away, a wonderful, wonderful woman. I spent a lot of time, I was very um, honoured to be able to say that I spent so much time with my mum. She was very, very sick. So I, um, I'm, I'm very happy for her that she's now at peace. Sad for us that we miss her a lot. And I thought what a tribu tributing way to go out today is by a tribute to my mum, Maria Mafrica, who passed away on the 26th of June. See you next week, Australia. See you next week, New Zealand. And I'll see you very soon, mum.